Hi everyone, I'm just gonna take a moment to get settled in here and let some people join. Welcome to today's live spirit chat where I will be taking your questions regarding your spiritual development, your spiritual practice, your magic practice, and all things related. Some of you have asked me in past live sessions about my cleansings, my cleansings in between services and things of that nature. And what I'm doing right now is one of those mini cleansings that I have mentioned before. I was just using my Florida water on the back of my neck and on my hands. And that's a traditional way to offer a mini cleansing in the moment when needed. Let me make sure my volume is up all the way. <clears throat> so before I start taking questions, like I said, I'm gonna take a moment to settle in. And then I'm also going to address a couple of things. Um, one question that I've already received prior to the live, and then some book recommendations that I've mentioned in uh, previous live sessions. Thanks for joining everybody. Nice to see you here. And if you haven't been in my live spirit chats before, then the whole thing is I am here to answer your questions about your spiritual development, your spiritual practice, developing your spiritual gifts, your spiritual tools, developing your magical practice and all things related to those topics, including divination, spell casting, candle magic, tarot cards, spirit guides, guardian angels, dream work, all kinds of things. I'm happy to answer your questions to the best of my ability. I'm going to burn a little Palo Santo to set the mood for us. And then I'm gonna talk about a couple of things I have on my agenda. And then I will start taking your questions. So thanks for joining. Miss Melinda here of Miss Melinda's Metaphysical Services.com. Nice to see you all today. I hope you're having a lovely Sunday. I am. I had a nice relaxing morning. I needed to catch up on some sleep and I got to do that this morning. I slept in a bit. It was a nice rainy morning so it was really lovely. So <clears throat> I did get a question before the live and it was about offerings, specifically fruit offerings. The question was, how long do I leave my fruit offerings out? So what I recommend is at least one day and no more than three days for perishable items. But that's really gonna depend on what you're comfortable with. Um, a lot of traditions recommend that you leave offerings out and that you do all kinds of um, magical or spiritual related things in odd numbers. So like three, seven, and nine are lucky numbers in magic. The rain has been so soothing. Three, seven, and nine are lucky numbers in magic. So those are um, good numbers to live by when trying to decide how long you're going to do a particular action or leave an offering out or burn a specific candle, etc. cetera. Um, the other, I also like three, six, and nine because those are variations of the number three. The number three is a sacred number related to the divine feminine or the divine goddess, goddess magic, etc. I like working with the numbers three, six, and nine. So those are just some good general like rules of, of thumb to work with. But with perishable offerings, it's going to be definitely up to your comfort level. Um, I will say, because people have asked me this in the past, they've asked me they're afraid of attracting bugs to their altar. I've never seen that happen. I've never had it be a problem. Um, if you know if you live in a place that has AC or you live in a place that you know if you, if you don't have a bug problem in your area then it's probably not going to be an issue um, you definitely don't want to let food or fruit or any kind of perishable items rot on your altar and I guarantee you that three days is not long enough for it to become um, rotted on your altar so that is a number that I'm comfortable with for perishable items definitely at least leave it out for one day 12 to 24 hours and then no more than three I hope that helps I also have a um, 
YouTube video where I talk extensively about basic offerings for saints, for spirits, for ancestors, for spirit guides, etc. So that's a good thing to refer to. <clears throat> In our recent um, live videos, I've had a lot of questions about um, developing very spe specific spiritual skills and spiritual gifts, um, including developing your yourself to connect with your spirit guides or raising your vibrations to connect with your spirit guides, guardian angels, even ancestors, things of that nature. And I've recommended, I keep referring people to this YouTube video that I made um, discussing some specific books and today I brought the books here with me so I can talk about them more specifically so the first book I have is called you are psychic the free soul method and it's by P.A. Sanders jr. I'll leave that up just so that you can get a look at it so this book talks about all the different types of psychic abilities very specifically like clairaudience, clairvoyance, clairsentient, etc. And it talks about how to work with those specific gifts and develop those specific gifts. It gives really excellent tips. It gives really excellent um, meditations, really excellent exercises. It's an amazing resource. And <clears throat> it also talks about how you can identify those gifts within yourself or know which gifts or which strengths, which tools are the strongest for you. So I highly recommend that book. The second one is Working with Spirit Guides by Ruth White. That's, this is an older book. I'm gonna see when it was published. Oh, well, it was republished in 2004. So it's an older book. I think it may have been first written in the 80s, but I don't see that right now. Um, the thing I like about it is it's coming from a shamanistic perspective. It doesn't say that. She doesn't come right out and say that, but um, if you have any familiarity with shamanic practice, um, shamanic journeys, and shamanic styles of meditation, then you would recognize it. Um, and she gives really amazing meditations, really amazing um, journeys, for, and exercises for learning how to work with your spirit guides. And this is the kind of book that you don't have to read cover to cover. You don't have to do this like as one continuous program. You can flip through it, you can pick and choose, you can find exercises and meditations that really work for you and use them as needed. So that's an excellent one. And then the third one is called Opening to Channel, How to Connect with Your Guide by Sanya, 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 Sanya Roman and Duane Packer. <clears throat> Sanya Roman and Duane Packer. And they have their own philosophy. They have their own belief system and it's very unique to them, very unique to what they do. And what I would recommend with all of these books is that it can be a, these exercises, these techniques, these tools, for training yourself can be applied to any spiritual practice, any belief system, any philosophy. So you don't have to take on their belief system and take on their philosophies in order to utilize these books and utilize these exercises. In fact, I recommend with anything that you're studying that you kind of throw out what doesn't work for you because spiritual practice should be unique to you and it should be your personal expression and it should resonate with you. So, Keep in mind that you don't have to adhere to their belief systems in order to use these books. And then the other thing is, you don't even, the, all of the exercises, tools, and meditations, etc., in these books are good for all kinds of spiritual development, not just for the, the um, specific activities, activities that they're talking about in their books. So, Developing any of these aspects of yourself are going to help with all areas of your spiritual development and all areas of your spiritual connection. You can use the opening to channel book to, even if you don't want to channel, for example. You can use these things for all kinds of different stuff. So that's what I recommend. And now I'm done with my specific agenda. And I would love to take your questions about any kind of spiritual development or spiritual practice, candle magic, um, 
psychic development, developing your spiritual gifts, dream work, connecting to ancestors, connecting to guides, working with your spirit guides, spiritual channeling, divination, tarot, and meditation, all kinds of things related. I'm happy to take your questions and to answer them to the best of my ability. For coffee and water, I do change it daily. I specifically change water daily. Um, water needs to be fresh every day, in my opinion, and in uh, a lot of people's opinion. So that's something I change every day. For the coffee, it kind of um, it kind of varies. It depends on what I'm specifically working with. Um, sometimes when I'm very very connected with the spirits or saints or a deity that I'm working with, they, they tell me if they're still working on that coffee or not, or they're still working on that alcohol or not. So I would say if you're working on something or you're, you're developing a relationship with a specific spirit or you're working on a specific goal and you know that you're going to be doing this continuously, every day then you can change that coffee every day but if it's something that you just did once and you're kind of just letting the energy um, expand and letting the the work or the connection with them kind of develop before you close it off then you might want to leave that coffee there you know for two or three days so use your intuition with that one but I do recommend putting fresh offerings of water on your on your altar every day the next question was, can I ask about manifestation from Manisha Jackson? Yes, you may ask about manifestation. I'll answer it to the best of my ability. Yep, like law of attraction. What would you like to know about it? Does it really work? Okay, this is a, um, this is a broad topic because I feel like the law of attraction has been really, really simplified online um, in a lot of social media and in a lot of conversations in general. It is not as simple as people like to make it sound. Um, but when you're talking about something online or in social media, you kind of have to break it down to some basic premises to get your, your point across, right? But I think that a lot of people are losing the bigger picture on that practice. Um, I have seen a lot of debate and a lot of anger and a lot of um, questions about victim blaming um, the law of attraction when it's take when it's compressed into such a simplistic statement like you are what you you are what you think or you know things like that like you you attract what you are um, then it sounds as if if you're born into poverty if you're born into abusive families if you've been sexually assaulted if you're the victim of racism or you've lived with racism in this country then it's your fault and that is not the case obviously there's a lot of things that happen in life that are are not our faults and but the thing is when we get stuck in those lower vibrations we do tend to keep attracting the same cycles and it that is why you see people doing things like living through the same kinds of patterns in in um in relationships over and over again like people who continuously get into abusive relationships or people who were abused or assaulted in their childhood and then they end up with those kinds of people in adulthood and it is because in our minds somewhere in our subconscious we think that's what life is we think that's what relationships are we think that's what love is and then we we project that and we continue to attract it so it's more complicated than you know you attract what you are <clears throat> and what I would like to say about it is it's a conscious practice it's a conscious practice it's not like you just attract what you are because that's what you are naturally it's be it's a conscious practice that you can undertake to change your thinking to change your vibrations to purposefully attract things into your life now if it's something that you know is a trigger issue for you like if it's if you want to attract a healthy relationship into your life but you had these kinds of negative experiences in your past or you need to heal from abuse things of that nature then obviously it's going to take a little bit more work on your part to heal yourself and to overcome what you need to overcome in your subconscious mind and in your heart and in your psychology to be able to attract those healthy relationships in 
but if it's something more simplified like you know I want to I want to attract money and you don't have any issues with money then it does work I hope that that kind of helps clear up some misconceptions about the law of attraction the other thing that people misunderstand about the law of attraction is that you actually need to summon up the feelings that you want to have it's not like you just think about money and then you attract money it's like you have to think about the feelings that you're going to have when you have that money you have to actually um, manifest those feelings within yourself make yourself feel those feelings meditate on those feelings let those feelings expand around you and focus on that for a consistent amount of time you know until you manifest that that's how you practice the law of attraction um, so you have to, yeah, you have to put emotion into it. It's about the feelings that you have. For instance, if you're trying to attract a specific kind of relationship, then you sit and you think about how am I going to feel in that relationship? I'm going to feel loved. I'm going to feel supported. I'm going to feel safe. I'm going to have trust. And you think about those kinds of feelings and you, you summon them up within yourself to as much as you can you create a vibration of those feelings and you really feel that and meditate on it and I recommend that that's another another misconception is people think you just have to go around thinking these thoughts all the time and if you're not thinking these thoughts then you're not attracting the right things into your life but it's human to feel a large variety of emotions it's human to have ups and downs throughout our days throughout our weeks we encounter all kinds of difficulties and challenges that change our our vibrations change the way that we're thinking nobody stays steady and positive and focused all the time right that's normal so what we need to do is set aside a, spe a specific amount of time consistently like either every day or on you know one two or three days a week and do this exercise consistently make it like a meditation practice where we're summoning up these feelings and focusing on these feelings and that's when the law of attraction really starts to work you're welcome let me know if that cleared anything up for you and if you have any other questions about it let's see are there specific offerings for money petitions like certain fruit or liquids well there are specific offerings for specific deities and specific saints and you know things of that nature so it really depends on who you're offering to um, in my opinion if you are if you're putting offerings out it's because you're working with a specific spirit saint or deity so then the question becomes what do they like um, there are some like really basic general offerings that pretty much work for everyone but you know that being said I would put the disclaimer in there certain spirits certain saints you know certain deities they have things that they do not like so if you're working with someone specific it, it, it's worth it to do a little bit of research about that but some basic offerings are coffee fresh water flowers um, and alcohol like wine whiskey rum gin are some big ones so those are some basic offerings that you can put out for most people and more, most spirits and most um, purposes. I also really like working with honey. And I would say that if you're working specifically for money, then you would want to use offerings that represent abundance, represent opulent, opulence, represent um, that kind of expansive, abundant, prosperous energy that you are seeking to manifest so I would use things like flowers you know beautiful bountiful um, honey honey very much represents wealth and what else all of those other ones would work sunflowers are specifically good for manifesting things that require a lot of energy obviously related to the Sun I would use sunflowers for money you could use a bundle of mint mint obviously is connected to money those are some ideas for you me see if I miss anything else yeah so Manisha let me know if those questions about the law of attraction worked for you if you have any other questions about them Jay Dizzy let me know if that worked for you okay you have one more question do you know like on YouTube you get tarot readings they pick a card ones and also true because 
yeah, tarot readings online can definitely be as true as real tarot, as I mean, as in-person tarot readings. I do tarot readings online. I do readings um, by Skype. I do generalized or group readings for my patrons, and a lot of people come back to me and say that those readings really resonate with them, that they really help them. Um, even, even if you're saying that these YouTube readers are not reading specifically for you, they're just doing general readings and putting, putting them out there on YouTube and you're wondering, are they real? Yes. If, if it resonates for you, if you feel like that was a message specifically for you, then it was. It's as simple as that. When you, you use your intuition and you if you connect with that and you feel that it was for you and that it's helping you and it's guidance that you needed, then yeah, it's real. It works. It's, it's all up to you. It's if you resonate with it, if it's a, you know, if you intuitively feel that and have a connection with it. So for those of you who have just joined, thanks for joining. If you haven't been here before, I'm Miss Melinda from Miss Melinda's metaphysical services.com. And I'm doing the live spirit chat today where I offer you answers about any of your questions regarding spiritual development, um, spiritual practice, practicing magic, candle magic, working with spirit guides, spiritual channeling, divination, tarot readings. You're welcome, Manisha. I'm glad it was helpful for you. Um, and all kinds of things in between. Meditation, developing your psychic abilities, developing your spiritual gifts. So let me know what your questions are and I'm happy to answer them to the best of my ability. And you can consider this a mini free spiritual coaching session. I do offer spiritual coaching. It is something that I very much enjoy doing. It is something that I very much am called to do. So this is a, a mini free session that I'm happy to offer you to help you with your spiritual guidance and, and help you with your spiritual practice and your spiritual development. <clears throat> so I'm drinking some iced dandelion tea and I made that tea out of some fresh dandelion greens and it's really tasty. I recommend it to anyone who's um, interested. I recommend it to anyone who's interested in finding new ways to boost your health. Um, to detoxify your liver, to detoxify your body in general, and to get some additional minerals and nutrients into your body that you may not be able to get through your normal diet. Let's see, am I allowed to start practicing spirituality at 16? Yeah, you're allowed to start practicing spirituality at any age. Um, <clears throat> I started at like 15, so yeah, you're definitely allowed. Um, I just recommend that at your age, you don't rush ahead and do anything that you're not totally comfortable with and that you don't do anything that you don't have um, information about. So at, when you're young and you're just starting out or when you're any age and you're just starting out, it's good to start reading some books, to ask questions, etc. Do the stuff that you're doing. Like it's, it's really great that you're here asking questions. Um, you should be proud of yourself for doing that and don't be afraid to continue asking questions. That's how you're going to learn. Um, pick up some books, you know, do some research, keep learning, learning, learning all the time and asking questions about those things that you learn. And don't just ask questions of other people. Check in with yourself and ask questions of yourself. Ask, is this something that I'm comfortable with? This, you know, this particular aspect, this particular new piece of information that I've learned. Is this something that I'm comfortable with? Is this something that resonates with me? Is this something that's practical for me? How can I implement it into my daily life in a way that serves me? Does this serve my highest good? You know, ask a lot of questions of yourself and of the world around you and of other people. And yeah, excellent. 16 is an excellent time to start. Hi, thanks for joining. I think that you asked me about the offering, um, the, the question about fruit offerings, and I've talked about that already. So you might want to um, go back and watch the video after um, I share it when we're done. <clears throat> And, yeah, you're welcome. 
For those of you who may have just joined or those of you who haven't been here before, I am here doing our live spirit chat to answer any questions that you might have about spiritual development, spiritual practice, developing your personal spiritual practice, developing your psychic gifts, developing your spiritual gifts, um, channeling spiritual guidance, connecting with your guides, connecting with your ancestors, doing dream work, doing divination, doing meditation, and all kinds of things that are related. So please do ask any questions that you may have about those topics, about your spiritual development and your spiritual practice, and I'm happy to answer them to the best of my ability. And Manisha, if you have any um, questions about book recommendations, I would be happy to assist you with that. On my blog, I have a really extensive list of book recommendations for people learning about all kinds of different spiritual and magical topics. Hi, thanks for joining. And one of the places that I always recommend people start is with Scott Cunningham. Now, he does come from a Wiccan slash pagan perspective. So he's really specific, but like I said, anytime that you read a book or you know do research, you can basically throw out anything that doesn't really resonate with you. You don't have to adhere to the author's philosophies and the author's belief system in order to use the information provided to you, and he has a wealth of information. So I definitely recommend Scott Cunningham books for you. So Jay Dizzy says, if you aren't receiving any feedback from a saint that you're working with, does that mean you should try a different saint? It depends. How long have you been working with them? It depends on how much time you have spent developing a relationship with them. Sometimes it could take up to a year to develop a relationship before you get any kind of assistance, feedback, or guidance from them. It also depends on how your specific spiritual gifts work for you and maybe you know you need to develop those spiritual gifts or you need to um, <clears throat> it may be that you need to listen or look in a different way it may be that the way you are seeking to receive guidance isn't working for you and it may be that the reason it isn't working for you is because you need to seek it or look for it in a different way um, in my experience, the messages, the signs, and the guidance are always there, but we don't always see them, or we don't always look for them, or we don't always know how to decipher them. So sometimes it's really about learning that spiritual language, learning your specific spiritual language, because any saint, any spirit, any deity, any guide, any ancestor is going to communicate with you within your specific spiritual language. We all vibrate at our own unique level. We all have our own unique vibration. We all have our own unique spiritual language that only works for us. You have to learn that language and learn the spiritual language, learn how spirit communicates with you and then look for that and know how to decipher it. So it could be that. <clears throat> Something you started two months ago. Okay, this is Sexy Rara. Ra. So it's something you started two months ago, honoring your ancestors, and is it serving your highest good? Only you can answer that, is it serving your highest good? Um, I don't see why honoring your ancestors wouldn't serve your highest good. In my opinion, that would serve everybody. Um, if you only started it two months ago and you feel like you're not connecting or you're not getting results, it's because you only started two months ago. Sometimes it takes up to a year to make a connection, especially with ancestors. I find that a lot of times um, saints and other kinds of spirits are more responsive faster, but ancestors may take a long time. So you have to really um, be patient, have faith, and be open to the fact that it may take some time and be open to the fact that like I was saying before, they might communicate in a way with you that you're not expecting. Um, and it, you, 
the, the reason I talk about like meditation and all of these exercises and all of the spiritual development all of the time is because developing yourself in that way is really going to assist you with making these connections with your ancestors, with your guides, with whoever. That is why it is important. So a lot of times when we're not receiving the connection or the messages or the guidance that we think we should be or that we want and we we're seeking, it's because we need to continue to develop ourselves. Meditation. Meditation needs to happen in conjunction with creating your um, relationships or cultivating your relationships with your ancestors and your guides. It is going to help you receive those messages and make those connections. Developing your psychic abilities. It is going to help immensely. The reason being because whatever gift is the strongest within you, and we all have one that is the strongest for us, we, we all have these abilities. It's just a matter of recognizing them, knowing how to tune in with them, and developing them. Whatever gift is strongest for you, that's how you're going to receive your messages, your guidance, and your information. So developing those aspects is really, really important. If you have any other questions about um, honoring your ancestors, then let me know. And I'm not sure about your question, is it serving your, your highest good? I wonder, um, like why, why are you questioning that? Has something occurred that makes you think it might not be serving your highest good? Or, you know, are you, do you have some kind of fear attached to it? Or um, something of that nature, let me know what that question is all about and I can try to elaborate a little bit further. Hi, thanks for joining. So in our live spirit chat, as many of you already know, but some of you may not, I am here to answer your questions about your spiritual development, your spiritual guidance, your spiritual practice, connecting with your ancestors, connecting with your spirit guides, spiritual channeling, divination, meditation, dream work, developing your psychic abilities, and all kinds of things related. So let me know what your questions are about your spiritual development and your spiritual path, and I am happy to answer them to the best of my ability. And let me know about that sexy rah-rah. Let me know um, what, what your question about serving your highest good is all about. Like what's behind that? You know, what would make you ask that? And I will elaborate a little bit further. So like I was saying earlier, um, I'm drinking dandelion tea. It's actually really, really tasty, but one of the reasons is because I only use the leaves, the greens of the dandelions instead of the root. Um, and it's really refreshing and herbs and greens are a really excellent way to receive additional minerals and nutrients in your body that you may not be getting from your food. So if you are thinking about other ways to supplement your diet and to you know, add to your health, uh, making teas out of herbs and greens is a really great way to do it. I don't recommend that you make teas out of just any herb without doing research about it and without knowing your body and knowing your own particular um, health really well. But something like greens, dandelion greens, edible things, things that people usually eat, that's a pretty um, safe place to start. And you can definitely do it with fresh greens. You could even do it with all kinds of other greens like collard greens or kale, um, stuff like that. If you have an abundance of that stuff, like maybe you have a garden and you don't know how you're going to use all of it or, you know, if you just, if you want to get extra nutrients in your body and in your diet, making a tea out of it is a really great way to do that. Spirit guides can be anyone. Can spirit guides be anyone? That's a tough question. Um, I don't think spirit guides can be anyone. Spirit guides need to be, <clears throat> how do I put this? There's a lot of different categories of spirit guides. Um, when, when a spirit is a guide, it is typically because 
that is in their spiritual contract. That is something that they decided to do or a job that they have been assigned to before they were incarnated or before they were reincarnated. Now there are other kinds of spirit guides, what, what a lot of people like to call high level spirit guides. I use that term because I don't have a better term at this time. I usually don't like to use terms that are black and white that are like, that say things like high or low, you know, black and white kind of dichotomies. Anyway, there are other spirit guides called high level spirit guides that were never incarnated, have never been human. So there are specific kinds of spirits that are guides. But then, you know, our ancestors can be a different kind of guide for us. And if we're really like, if we're really being, you know, thorough about it, or we really, you know, feel a need to categorize, then ancestors are not really spirit guides. They're just ancestors. It's a different kind of guide. Um, but I wouldn't say that anybody can be your spirit guide. It's someone that you have a connection with or a link to or someone that has a responsibility to you for one reason or another but tell me tell me more about that because there's something behind your question that i don't know about like maybe you feel connected to a deceased person that you never knew something of that sort you need advice with persistent anxiety um okay well for anxiety i recommend meditation um, I don't really know, I, I would need to know a little bit more about like your anxiety could be stemming from something that has happened in your life or it could be something that is just like in your um, nervous system that you're hardwired for. So there's different ways to deal with this depending on what specifically is going on with you. Um, <clears throat> a lot of times, a lot of times especially in our culture in this day and age, things like anxiety and depression are actually linked to tr trauma, to post-traumatic stress or past traumas that have not been healed. So if you're dealing with persistent anxiety, I recommend A, a consistent meditation practice. I know that one of the things you may say is, I can't sit down and focus, I can't meditate because I'm too anxious. Well, that's why you need to try it. And if you don't know how or you are not able to at this time to do it on your own, then guided meditations are the perfect way to start. There's tons of free ones out there on YouTube, all over online. Um, there's guided meditations everywhere. There, there are apps that you can use for guided meditation. There are two that I like to use. One is called Insight Timer. And I can't remember what the other one is called at this moment, but there's lots of uh, meditation apps that you can use. Guided meditations are a great, great way to start meditating. Um, meditation is like anything else. It's a practice. It's something that you learn through practicing. So the recommendation is that when you have trouble focusing, when you, when you think you're not doing the meditation right, which is human, no one ever is going to be able to do the meditation perfect. But the key is you don't beat yourself up about it. You gently bring your mind back to the focus every time you feel it straying. You don't get upset, you don't get mad, you don't say I'm not doing it right, I can't do this. You gently bring your attention back to the focus every time. Creating that kind of focus, creating that kind of um, safe space within yourself, creating that kind of gentle mindfulness and awareness is going to very much help you deal with anxiety in the long run. It's going to train your mind so that you are able to gently bring yourself back to where you need to be when you start to feel anxious, when you start to you know, feel out of control, when you start to have those issues. Um, Sometimes anxiety is about our minds moving too fast and us thinking about 50,000 different things at once. So developing focus, the kind of focus and mindfulness that we can develop through meditation helps with that. It helps us to focus on one thing at a time. The other thing that I recommend is that you <clears throat> look at your past, look at your history, look within yourself and see is this anxiety related to a bigger issue is it related to a general feeling of being out of control in life is it related to a feeling of insecurity a feeling of not being safe a feeling of fear um, and then do some work to figure out the root of that problem because very many times 
anxiety is related to some kind of trauma, something that needs to be healed, some kind of mindset that needs to be tweaked, something of that nature. So it's going to take some inner work. Oh, you were just curious about who can be spirit guides. Um, yeah, it's a variety of different kinds of guides, but it's not just anybody, if that makes sense. That's okay if you do meditation when you fall, you fall asleep when you do meditation. Um, that's really common and it's normal, you know, especially when you're just learning, but once you um, get practice at it, you will find a way to stay in that meditative zone without falling asleep. If you're falling asleep doing guided meditations, then while you're asleep, you're still going to be absorbing those, those messages subliminally, subliminally or subconsciously. So it's still going to work for you if you're doing those kinds of um, guided meditations. But my favorite book on meditation is called Journey to Awareness, a Meditator's Guidebook by Ram Das, And it's amazing. And it's not, it's, it's not boring. People think that a book about meditation is going to be some really boring or that it's going to like be a really intensive guidebook that's going to make you do like a step-by-step -step program. It's none of those things. Um, it's entertaining, it's interesting, it's smart, and it's something that you can jump around inside of the book and like take different exercises, take med different meditations, take different pieces of wisdom and use them, you know, apply them at your will. So Ram Das talks about falling asleep and he talks about when he was first learning to meditate, he would often mistake the feeling of tranquility and the feeling of oneness and the feeling of being in a meditative state with sleepiness. Like he was getting, he, because pre, prior to being so practiced at meditating, the only time that he was so relaxed was when he was laying down to sleep at night or resting. So he didn't yet know within himself how to define or differentiate that feeling of tranquility and oneness and just being centered within yourself. Once he realized that this was a new thing and that it really had nothing to do with sleep, he was able to let go of the idea subconsciously that he needed to rest or that he needed to sleep. He recognized he wasn't tired, he was relaxed, he was tranquil. So really, um, if you're having problems falling asleep during meditation, then it's actually a good sign that you're on the right track. You're achieving that level of, first of all, you're changing your brain state, you're changing your brain waves, that's a, a signal that you are. Secondly, you're achieving that meditative centered state, that um, state of relaxed, relaxed feeling that you need to achieve in order to meditate properly you're getting yourself to a new level. So it's actually a good sign and it's a part, it's a normal part of your journey of meditation. It's getting past that, that step where you're falling asleep. I do think that prayer is a good form of meditation, but I think that it is a different form of meditation. It's not the kind of meditation that I'm talking about. Um, there are different forms of meditation and you know, meditation can be simply being aware of your thoughts and focusing on your thoughts, focusing on your feelings and meditating on um, your life. Like there's, you know, there's a difference between meditating on your life, meditating on your prayer, um, meditating on your guide or meditating on your um, your spiritual power there's a difference between that and then um, meditating to get into a different mindset to get into a different um, to change your brain waves but that being said meditation can help you get in I mean prayer can help you get into a different brain state and it can change your brain waves I think that it is a good form of meditation, but I think that it can't be substituted for a meditation practice, if that makes sense. Hi, thanks for joining.
If you haven't joined before, then this is my live spirit chat. I'm Miss Melinda of Miss Melinda's Metaphysical Services.com. I'm here to answer your questions about spiritual development and spiritual practice, developing your psychic gifts, developing your spiritual gifts, developing your connection with your ancestors, your spirit guides, divination, magic practice, candle magic, and all things related. So feel free to ask me whatever questions you have in mind, anything that you know has been burning on your mind that you haven't been able to ask someone, and I am happy to answer those questions to the best of my ability. And you can consider this a mini coaching session. I do offer spiritual coaching. I do offer spiritual mentorship. So this is a live mini free spiritual coaching session where I am happy to give you advice, give you tips and assist you with your spiritual development and your spiritual practice. Good, Jay Dizzy, I'm glad that that helped you. And I was also trying to think about other um, tips for dealing with anxiety. And sometimes anxiety is related to picking up energy from the people around you in your world. Um, picking up energy when you're going out into public places. Sometimes anxiety is related to being really sensitive to the people and the energies around you. So sometimes some kind of um, protection is in order, Sometime, some kind of energetic or spiritual protection. And for that, I always recommend just um, envisioning an energetic shield around you. The colors that work best for that shield are gold, white, or any variation of blue. Envisioning an energetic bubble around you that is made out of moving particles just like the rest of the world is made out of. It is permeable. It lets good things in. It does not let things that you do not want in. And it's important to envision this bubble from above you, from below you, from behind you. See yourself completely surrounded in this energetic bubble and know that it is going to protect you. <clears throat> And that's something that once you get into the practice of doing it, you can do it really quick. You can do it in a matter of seconds. And it is really powerful when, especially if you become really adept at energy work, um, channeling energy, directing energy, building energy, etc. And you can do that while you're sitting and talking to someone. You can do it while you're standing in a store. You can do it in your car before you go in someplace. And it's going to help you be protected and prevent you from being affected from any negativity or any unwanted energy around you, which could be affecting your anxiety. <clears throat> Another thing with anxiety is, I talked earlier about sometimes it's related to trauma. So there are different levels of trauma, right? There's psychological levels, there's emotional levels, and then there's spiritual or energetic levels. So sometimes um, there's been trauma to ourselves or our bodies that have misaligned something in our energetic system within ourselves, that has misaligned something within our chakra system, that has misaligned something in the way that energy flows through our body. So a lot of times chakra work can be really helpful for alleviating anxiety and figuring out where the energy is not flowing properly or where the energy is blocked or misaligned within your chakra system and working on those chakras or generally working on cleansing and balancing your chakras. And that is not um, as difficult as it sounds. It's just about visualization. It is more effective once you learn how to work with energy effectively, but you can always start with just visualizing and it's, it's very powerful, very effective. So let me know if you have any other questions about that. <clears throat> and it seems like um, the spirit chat's a little bit slow today. It seems like I don't have as many questions as I usually do. And so I'm probably going to log off really soon if nobody else has any questions. So let me know if you have some last questions that you want to sneak in. Like I said, it can be related to anything to do with spiritual practice or spiritual development or making magic, candle magic, 
anything of that nature. Working with spirit guides, saints, ancestors, guardian angels, divination, developing your psychic abilities, developing your spiritual gifts, meditation, all things related. Seeing certain colors during meditation, do certain colors mean certain things? Yeah, certain colors mean certain things, but more importantly, if you're seeing things during meditation, even just seeing colors is a beginning of having visions. And what that means is that you are clairvoyant and you are going to be able to develop your clairvoyance abilities. Clairvoyance means seeing visions, right? So that is the gift of sight. So keep meditating because you're developing your spiritual abilities, you're developing your psychic gifts. And the more that you meditate, the more you're going to develop those. If you're already seeing things now, then you're going to start seeing more and more and you're probably very soon going to start seeing visions images, pictures, things like that, that are going to be telling you messages. Now, in the beginning, that might be, it might not make a ton of sense to you. So then your job or your work is going to be deciphering your own spiritual language, deciphering your symbolic language, and figuring out what those visions, what those pictures and images mean to you and what spirit is communicating with you. But keep meditating because you're on the right path and you're developing strongly right now. Um, so green to me, you said you see green a lot. So green to me is related to the heart chakra. Green is about healing. Green is about everything heart centered. Green is also about nature, right? Think about grass, think about um, leaves, think about things of that nature. Green is healing, it's calming. It's related to nature magic. It's related to trees and forest magic. It's related to everything to do with your heart chakra. So that's your inner child, that's your loving connections, that's your healing abilities, your ability to heal yourself or your need to heal yourself, as well as any kind of healing that you may be able to offer people around you. It's related to the connections that you can have with other people. It's related to compassion, empathy, and all things surrounding those topics. Mermaid, mermaid mane hair? Mermaid mane hair. I had a dream about me holding a snake and being intrigued by it. What are snakes about? Snakes are about all kinds of things. They're related to specific um, spirits and deities in different traditions. They are also related to fertility, feminine knowledge, feminine wisdom, the divine feminine, um, goddess energy. They're related to the underground as well. You know, snakes, they crawl on their bellies along the earth. They're deeply connected to the earth. They're deeply connected to the underground. They are about um, hidden knowledge, hidden wisdom, occult knowledge, magical knowledge. Um, they're also about transformation because they shed their skins. So snakes can signify a lot of things. They're related to St. Martha. St. Martha holds snakes. So um, think about that too, like learning, we call it correspondences, learning your correspondences or learning what symbols, what animals, what things relate to what deities or what spirits or what mythologies is really going to help you decipher the signs and the messages that you receive in a spiritual context. So that is where it becomes really useful to study a wide variety of topics like mythology, like the history of other religions, or like plants and herbs, um, things of that nature, and learn how these kinds of things relate to each other that's going to help you decipher these message that's another piece of the spiritual language that I've been talking about learning yeah snakes are related to Martha the dominator um, so it depends on the kind of snake too like a lot of people in their magical symbolism they use snakes as like a, a symbol of overcoming enemies but that's gonna be more like a cobra or a snake that's aggressive. 
It sounds to me like your dream is, is not about aggression. It's not about any anything like that. And the other thing that I always tell people about dreams is it's really going to depend on you. This is something, this is a, um, a direct message to you in a language that only you can understand. So you have to think to yourself like, what do snakes mean to me? What did I feel in my dream? What was the over, overall feeling of the dream? How did I feel when I woke up from the dream? And how do I feel when I think about me in that dream holding that snake? Also, are there any significant events or memories in your life that are related to snakes? Because it could be referring back to something related to those experiences or those memories. So dreams are very much an individual thing. Um, and it's going to depend a lot on your feelings and your experiences. Generally speaking, snakes can very much be about, it's a sign telling you that you are transforming, you are developing your, your spiritual connection, you are growing, you are transitioning, and you, you, know, you have access to new knowledge and new connection now if you look for it and if you take advantage of it. Can deities harm you if you do something wrong? Like if you lit a love spell to Oshun or St. Martha? Um, so I don't work with those deities, so I can't speak specifically to them. But what I do know is that a lot of people who, a lot of people would say yes. Uh, and I think that a lot of people who work with deities that are in the same families or related to what you're talking about would say yes they would believe that a deity can harm you if you do something wrong um, in my personal philosophy I somewhat differ from what other people believe at times because I believe that if I have a pure intention and that I am coming to a deity or a spirit with an open heart and that I am honest and I'm sincere and I do my best then they're not going to harm me. Um, I don't believe that we can really do something wrong. I mean, you can if you intentionally do something wrong, but I don't believe that if you make a mistake or you do something that's out of tradition or you do something in the wrong sequence or you accidentally leave the wrong offering and you didn't know, I don't believe that you're going to be hurt, harmed, or punished because any of that because Spirituality is highly individual. Spirituality is very much about what, what resonates with you, what you're connected to, and following your own intuition. Making spiritual connection with deities or spirits is very much about learning. It's about learning that relationship. Think about it in terms of a relationship with a new friend or a new lover. There's a lot of stuff that you don't know about them in the beginning. You may do something they don't like. You may say something that triggers them. You may not know about some bad past experience that they've had, and so you bring something up that is harmful to them. If they know that you're a loving, compassionate person and that you're honest and that you truly want to have that connection with them and that your intentions are good, they're not going to punish you or harm you, right? You're going to you're you're going to make mistakes in life. This is about honoring your inner child when you're still learning. It is okay to make mistakes and you're not going to be punished for it. I prefer to believe in a um in a benevolent universe and a universe that wants to work with me and wants to bring me blessings rather than a universe that wants to harm me and I suggest that you develop that kind of mindset in your spiritual practice and I suggest that you take the fear out of it do your best to be respectful do your best to be genuine do your best to let Santa Muerta know that you have love in your heart and that you honor her and respect her and that you are doing your best right that's all you can do do what you can to overcome your fear you don't want to bring fear into your spiritual connection or your spiritual practice especially with deities saints or spirit guides so I recommend that you find find where the root of that fear is and find a way to overcome it so thanks so much for joining everybody I really appreciate you being here I really enjoy your questions I really enjoy interacting with you and I'm grateful to be able to answer your questions and have this time with you stay blessed and have a great Sunday